I'm Karis Williams. I'm an artist, designer and fabricator and member of the ESAB elite team of welding influencers. In the last episode, I talked about choosing the right welding helmet for your job. And if you missed that and other episodes, you can catch up with those on ESAB Europe's YouTube channel. A good welding helmet is the most essential bit of kit for every operator. These days, that usually means pairing a helmet with a powered air purifying respirator or PAPR. To supply clean, fresh air inside the helmet. A PAPR offers heavy duty protection from fume and dust when welding, cutting, gouging or grinding. In this video, I'm going to show you how a PAPR makes it easy to breathe easier, plus offer some PAPR best practices. Before we start, remember that the UK Health and Safety Executive and similar European agencies have outlined guidance for protecting workers from welding fumes. The best fume protection is an integrated plan along with the PAPR unit. These can include local extraction units like this ESAB carry back, or the portable unit that looks just like a robot next to me. <laughs> also, there's the option of fume extraction torches, like this ESAB fume torch, where the fumes are extracted as you weld through the nozzle of the torch. Now, let's look at the components of a PAPR. The core of a PAPR is this blower unit, which is powered by a lithium rechargeable iron battery, just like your phone. The whole assembly attaches to a comfortable and adjustable waist belt. To provide clean air, the blower pulls in air through a pre-filter to extract dust. Then, through this main filter, which is specifically rated to remove welding fumes and particulates. The air then flows through this hose to supply clean, fresh air inside your helmet. The flame resistant head seal connects to the helmet to provide a barrier from the ambient air. Now, let's examine some of the features and functions found on a typical PAPR system. After turning on the unit, there should be some type of level indicator, such as this flashing red light on this ESAB unit. There's also a control for airflow adjustment. This particular unit has a flow range of 170 to 220 litres per hour. It also has a microprocessor to control fan speed, meaning that the unit delivers the set flow rate. If the flow rate falls below a set demand for air, an alarm will sound. Typically, this alarm means the battery needs to be recharged. If you're concerned about the lack of airflow when using your PAPR, relax. PAPRs will sound visual and audible alarms if the airflow falls below the minimum safe level. If the battery is charged, this probably means you have a clogged filter. Under normal use, filters need to be changed every one to two weeks. Some PAPRs come with a convenient airflow indicator as best practice, I test the airflow rate before each use and check the pre-filter and main filter after use. Following these guidelines to help ensure your PAPR provides long and trouble-free operation and you will breathe easier. If you still need help on operating and maintenance tips for your PAPR, we've created a great ESAR PAPR poster which you can request at esarb.com forward slash arc chat.